Back in the summer of 2016, the NBA draft class was headlined by two potential stars entering the league. Those two players are Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. However, fast forward to where we are today, and one can easily argue that the 2016 draft was more than just the Simmons and Ingram lottery, because players such as Jalen Brown, Jamal Murray, and Pascal Siakam were also participants in that draft class, and some of which, I would argue Jalen Brown, actually turned out to be better than both Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. But looking back at that draft class with a bit more intentions, one can argue that the biggest surprise was that Chris Dunn never panned out. With the fifth overall pick, the Minnesota Timberwolves selected the 6'3 point guard in hopes that his experience would lead to immediate impact for a young team that was looking to retool. But sadly, here we are now five years later removed and not only has Chris Dunn not been able to meet those expectations, but also he's not even in the NBA anymore. And what's odd to me is that no one is even talking about it. So what exactly happened? Heading into the 2016 draft, Chris Dunn was a highly touted NBA prospect that was unanimously predicted to be selected with a top five pick. A huge reason for this had a lot to do with his frame, respectable athleticism, experience, and his impact on the defensive end. Standing at 6'3 with a 6'9 wingspan, averaging roughly 15 to 16 points, five rebounds, six to seven assists, and nearly three steals in his last two years playing at Providence, not only was it a no-brainer for the Minnesota Timberwolves who select them with the fifth overall pick, but him having a ceiling of a lesser athletic version of John Wall didn't seem that far-fetched either. Now, of course, there were some concerns with the 22-year-old guard entering the league, a lot of which had to do with his scoring abilities, and more specifically, was he a legitimate floor spacer? Because even though, yes, Dunn had respectable three-point percentages in his last two years in college, many people didn't believe it was going to carry over due to his lackluster free throw percentages. However, at this time, Minnesota didn't really need more offense. The team already featured Andrew Wiggins, Zach Levine, and Carl Anthony Towns, all of which gave you more than enough offense and really didn't show that much promise on the other side of the floor. And also heading into the 2016-2017 season, Ricky Rubio was on the last year of his contract, so again, it only made sense that Chris Dunn was a natural predecessor to Rubio. But unfortunately, things just didn't go over that smoothly. After his rookie season on paper, Dunn was horrible offensively, and it came across that this was going to be a much bigger project than the Timberwolves anticipated, as he finished the season averaging less than four points per game, two assists, and shooting splits that were really, really bad. Shooting 38% from the field, 29% from three, and 61% from the free throw line. Now, giving a rookie some years to progress as a solid contributor to the team team that drafted him is normal in many situations. However, the Timberwolves didn't deem it so. Chris Dunn, who had spent four years in college, was expected to come into the league and have immediate impact. And even if there was a learning curve, the one that Dunn was going to have to go through was too steep for the Timberwolves to bear through. Furthermore, in that season, Zach Levine tore his ACL, further diminishing a lot of the offensive firepower that the Timberwolves had in that young core. So Minnesota decided to go in a different direction and target identifiable talent instead of hoping that the potential that they had on their roster would one day pan out. And so just one year removed from drafting Chris Dunn, the Timberwolves decided to trade him alongside Zach Levine and a top 10 draft pick to the Chicago Bulls for Jimmy Butler and a non-lottery draft pick. Once traded, Chris Dunn voiced his opinion on his experience in Minnesota, claiming that the reason why things didn't work out for him in his rookie season is not only because he was still learning the game of basketball at a professional level, but also his role in the team really wasn't that clear. Last year, I couldn't even tell you what position. One, two, three, I'm just out there trying to impress the coach. But now in Chicago, Dunn was a bit more optimistic as he had a clear identity to the team as a starting point guard. Dunn would see massive improvements statistically in his sophomore year, averaging 13 points, six assists, two steals, on shooting splits that were still below league average, but significant leaps from what we saw out of him in his rookie campaign. In his second year in Chicago, many people were highly optimistic about what Dunn could bring to the table. Not only because of natural progression, but more importantly, he was going to play more minutes alongside Zach Levine, 
who on paper was going to take more responsibility offensively, which clearly still wasn't Chris Dunn's strong suit, which then would allow Dunn to focus more of his energy and potential on the defensive end of the floor, which should have helped this team tremendously in terms of molding an identity for the young backcourt. But unfortunately, this is the beginning of where things start to unravel for Chris Dunn in his career. Dunwood missed the first two games of the 2018-2019 season as he attended his first child's birth, but made his season debut against the Dallas Mavericks. But unfortunately, after that game, he was diagnosed with an MCL injury to his left knee, sidelining him for nearly two months. Then, when Dunn was made available for him to play, there were a lot of changes in the organization. The most noteworthy one was that Fred Hoiberg was fired as a head coach and Jim Boylan was brought in as his replacement. And also around the same time where Chris Dunn was preparing himself to come back to action, unfortunately Levine was absent as he was dealing with nagging injuries. Now there was a portion of the season where Levine and Dunn was able to play alongside one another, but unfortunately that didn't last too long. Once Levine was back for roughly a 30 game stretch, the two young guards were able to play alongside one another, but towards the tail end of the season, both of them would go off and on on missing games, and by the end of the year, both Dunn and Levine only played alongside one another for 36 games. And just on an individual level, Chris Dunn was only available for 46 games during the 2018-2019 season. Now, statistically speaking, Chris Dunn more or less just plateaued in production, which isn't a good thing at all. Be very mindful that Chris Dunn spent four years in college, and Chicago was already giving him the benefit of the doubt that the reason why things didn't work out in Minnesota had more to do with the lack of direction rather than the lack of talent. But if the production in Dunn is already flatlining this early in his career, that is certainly a concern, a concern that Chicago acted on immediately. Because heading into the 2019 draft for the 7th overall pick, the Chicago Bulls decided to go with another point guard by the name of Kobe White. And then, later on in the offseason, the Bulls decided to trade for Thomas Sadoransky. Both Sadoransky and White were immediate threats to Chris Dunn and his role on this team as a starter, and this was proven immediately at the beginning of the 2019-2020 season. As Dunn was demoted as a backup in the first 20 games of the season, and one could easily argue that the only reason why Dunn was promoted into a starter is because both Otto Porter and Chandler Hutchinson dealt with injuries that sidelined them which gave the opportunity for Dunn to be implemented back into the starting lineup. For the next 31 games, Dunn attempted to maximize his opportunity as a starter for the Bulls, but nothing really manifested for him offensively. However, on the other side of the floor, a lot of the potential started to be seen. So much so that by the end of the year, Dunn actually received some all defensive team votes from many media members and possibly would have made even more noise in that conversation if tragedy didn't strike once more against the Brooklyn Nets on January 31st, 2020, where Chris Dunn, as he was trying to set a charge, unfortunately suffered another MCL injury, this time to his right knee, that kept him sidelined for the foreseeable future. Which is certainly one way to look at it, because unbeknownst to Chris Dunn, the rehab process for the second MCL injury would be a 15 month timetable. And the reason for this is because of COVID-19. Weeks after Dunn was diagnosed, the NBA decided to suspend the regular season until further notice, and during the middle of the pandemic, that meant that all facilities and resources were extremely limited. So limited that Chris Dunn couldn't even go to a gym or a facility to rehab, which meant that the best form of treatment that Dunn had at his accessibility at the time was just simply bed rest which was a horrific reality for Dunn at that time because once the NBA brought back basketball and ended the regular season, the 26-year-old entered the offseason as a free agent and the Chicago Bulls were no longer interested in his services. Luckily, in late November, Chris Dunn found an opportunity in Atlanta as the Hawks gave him a two-year $10 million contract, but once instituted with another NBA team, it was revealed that the rehab process had only begun. 
because shortly coming to Atlanta, Chris Dunn dealt with a lot of ankle and lower back pain. An MRI later revealed that he had loose cartilage in his right knee, which then immediately pushed him to surgery in late December. By the end of the season, Chris Dunn played a grand total of four regular season and five postseason games for the Atlanta Hawks before Atlanta decided to just trade him to the Boston Celtics in August of this year. Then a month later, the Boston Celtics decided to trade him to the Memphis Grizzlies. And then a month after that, Chris Dunn was waived by the Memphis Grizzlies on October 16th, 2021. Which brings us to the reality that we see today, which is Chris Dunn is not in the league, which is something that I find very interesting and very sad. Granted, I do not believe that Chris Dunn will ever reach the expectations that many people had for him entering the NBA, but I do believe that he is still a serviceable backup point guard in today's league if given the right opportunity. But as I say that, I do step back and look at the reality of who Chris Dunn is, and we are talking about a player who was already struggling significantly offensively in the NBA, who was coming off of not one, but two MCL injuries to both of his knees, and the one area that he could immediately impact in the NBA, which being the defensive end, will definitely take a a massive hit in production and impact thanks to those injuries. But hey, please let me know what you think which team in the NBA should give Chris Dunn the opportunity. I look at teams like the Houston Rockets or the Detroit Pistons who need extra guard play, and I believe that Chris Dunn should be able to fulfill that if he is 100% healthy and ready to go. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace.